Hello class. Thank you once again for coming to attend this lesson. I want to appreciate all of you who spare time to watch. Uh, for those who have subscribed, thank you. Just hit the like button. Those who have not subscribed, please subscribe to our channel so that you can be able to receive the latest from us. We deliver weekly lessons on YouTube to be able to help all those that are not able to attend physical school. And currently for those in Uganda that are not yet at school, we're here to make sure that we get the basic learning from home. So this lesson is for senior one and it's by uh, me, your teacher, Mr. Larry, or teacher on your And today's topic is on the WH interrogatives. So I know right now your mind must be asking yourself, what are interrogatives? Uh, the word interrogatives comes from the word to interrogate. And to interrogate is to question, to dig deeper, to find out. So we shall want to know what are these WH questions or what are these WH aspects that want to dig deep? So today that's what we want to find out. So today's objectives will be able to guide us on those specific areas that can help our lesson to run. So what are those lesson objectives? We'd like to know what are they? What are these WH interrogatives? How to apply them, how to answer those questions, and most importantly, how to make our own WH questions. In short, WH interrogatives is the same thing you've been hearing people call WH questions. So we want to see them. You should also be able to see the different examples or forms of them, but most importantly, the application. All right, class. Okay. So by definition, we'd say that these are commonly known as the WH questions. They are used in a sentence to ask a question. So in short, once they are applied, they are basically to find out, to interrogate, to ask a question, so that someone gets to know the answer. Another way we can understand them is that they are used to find out information about something or someone. So in case you want to find out about me, something more about me, you'll be able to ask yourself particular questions. Questions like, who are you? Why are you here? What is your name? So those basic WH questions help you to dig deep and find out more about me. By so doing, you'll be interrogating me. That's why they get the name, the WH interrogatives. So they are very applicable in our day-to-day -day life. They make communication easy, but most importantly, they bring about clarity of the content you are discussing. Because when you dig deep into those questions, the person will be able to ask you and you'll be able to reply, or you'll be able to ask and the person will be able to give you specific information. For example, why did you come to school late today? That statement alone is a question, it's an interrogative. Someone is trying to interrogate you. So where do we indicate the interrogative? The WH here, the Y contains the WH interrogative. So this is what makes it a question eventually. And we shall apply the question mark here as a punctuation mark. The above question requires a specific reason, stroke and explanation why the above person reached school late. So the person is inquiring, could be a student, could be a teacher asking his student, or it could be a student asking a fellow student why they came to school late. So such a question requires specific answers or specific information to be considered a correct answer. More about these questions. Want to see that. So these questions usually require specific answers I had already hinted. And these answers rotate about town, time rather, they rotate about or around time, place, reason for, name of something, or someone, an action, or a way something was done. So when you listen to some of these questions below here, some of these questions want to find out things to do with place. For example, questions like where is for place. Things like who wants to find out the someone. When, in terms of play, the time, 
you know? So these WH questions usually require specific information. So for example, you cannot say where, and then you give the answer. For example, you say, you give time. Someone says, where did you go? Then you say at 1 p.m. That is a wrong one. So that one requires a specific answer. And that answer, if someone says, where did you go? You will say, I went to the market. So that one requires a place. Where did he die? They want a specific place. So that's why we are saying that these WH questions usually ask specific answers or require specific answers once they have been asked. So in a conversation, they are applied for clarity. These are best used by policemen, by teachers, by parents at home. Uh, where else do we see them commonly? When you are lost and you're looking for a place, when you want to know about time. So these are different uh, points where we apply them or places where we apply them. So they are very, very important. And we must always ask the right question if we need the right answer. Remember in computer, we say garbage in, garbage out. This is a perfect area for that. Because when you ask whose pen is this, you want to know the owner. If the person tells you the place, yeah, definitely they have failed. These are very common in exams as well. It can be very important for you to use them also to understand what an examiner wants to know or what an examiner is finding out about their particular concept in their question. All right. So I have examples of those questions here. Why did you leave church early? This is reason. How? They want to find out the way something was done. What? They want to find out the name, uh, in short, who did something. What is your name? Here, we want to find out exactly who you are. Who has not handed in the work? The teacher wants that particular person. Where did you still want the place? Which of the two girls want you to, to state clearly who among them is your sister? So you find that all of them drive us to a particular point, to a specific place, to a name of a person, to a particular individual. So for a reason for something. So that's why we are saying they are very important. So pause right now and ask yourself, what are the common WH questions you use? When you ask someone, what answer do you expect? And when you are asked, what answer should you give? Because they are very important for all to understand which question you should ask at what point so that you can be able to get the correct answer. We need to keep that in mind. Thank you. Now, there's something I want us to note, especially when it comes to the formation. When you look at the structure of these sentences, these sentences are based on, in English, there's what you call a pattern. Here, there is a pattern of formation. So these WH questions also have a rule of formation here, or how they are applied, they follow a certain rule. For example, when you look at the WH question here, it is usually the one that starts the sentence. If you look at this question, what starts this question? It's the WH. If you look at all of them, let's take a look at them, underline them. Here, 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 here. This and finally this. They are the ones that start the sentence or the question. Why, how, what, who? What is followed next? That's what I want you to look at in the next part here that we are noting. When you look at them, from the example above, we note that the WH starts the question, followed by the auxiliary verb. Do you still remember auxiliary verbs? Ponder. These are usually what we call helping verbs. And they have a variety. We have are, is, um, can, dare, do, did, have, and many others that we have here. So when you look at the formation or how they're used, you find that the WH starts the question, it is followed by the auxiliary verb. Here, the auxiliary in this one, we could note all the auxiliaries here. We have did, we have are, we have is, we have has, we have do, we have of, is here, 
even ease is an auxiliary verb here. What, after that auxiliary verb, what do we look out for again? I want us to look at that, because remember, this is now the most important part. We are trying to create a pattern of how they are used. You find that the after the WH, it is followed by an auxiliary verb, which is followed by the doer. The doer of the action is also, can also be a noun, can also be a pronoun, like I, you, we. It could be, for example, if we, if it, these are now pronouns here. If it were for nouns, we'd say, for example, if you look at here, we look at say, uh, why did James leave church early? Now, there, the you now, the, 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 um, the, the, the doer here would now be James, would now replace the, uh, the pronoun with the noun. So either way, they can alternate. Remember, a pronoun is a word that is used in place of a noun, whereas a noun is a naming word. And at this point here, the noun would be the subject, or depending, it could also be the object. So that's what we should keep in our mind. So we have the, the WH starting the question, uh, the question, followed by the auxiliary verb, followed by the doer, which is the you, and finally, it is followed by the action, followed by the action. That's what we needed to note in here. That is how usually they are used. For you to be able to properly use them, you need to follow such a format when you're forming your own question. The WH starts the question, it is followed by an auxiliary verb, which is followed by the doer, and finally the action. Since it is a question, remember we say WH questions, eventually that WH question must have a question mark. And that question mark is what indicates what we call punctuation. Otherwise, it will just be a statement. And yet for us, we are interested in the WH questions. I'm very sure you have understood or you've been able to hear uh, me out and I hope you have understood. So I have a simple exercise here for you to do. And in this exercise, I'm asking you to properly answer these questions. Once you have answered them, you will submit your answers to the Google Classroom. I will post this work as well in our Google Classroom. And in our Google Classroom, you'll be able to to approach, I will share the codes and everything as I attach this video later on. So thank you so much for attending and God bless you all. Remember to subscribe and like our page and also share with as many people as you can so that all the learners out there who are, who are not learning can have chance to learn. Otherwise, God bless you. Have a good day ahead of you.